Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back as the case may be. Uh, this is another unboxing video and uh, this is a game that I bought uh, from someone on Facebook. It just arrived. I've been kind of on a roll in buying games. I, I, I need to stop um, because they, they take up some space. But uh, I'm also very curious about these games as you probably know if you've watched my other videos. So with that, I am going to go ahead and, uh, and actually start the unboxing. So as you can see, this is authentic. I have my, my carpet knife, which works much better than scissors. No offense to the scissors crowd. And let's see what we have here. So pretty pretty well boxed up here. I apologize for what you're seeing. Um, some random pieces of cardboard. The obligatory bubble wrap. I was wondering why this box was so big and heavy and now I know why because this game is big and heavy and I don't know if you can see it here but it's called Clubhouse it's the 1991 edition contains 660 player cards from the 1990 playing season and this box is gotta be I don't know, 16, 15, 16 inches long. And give me a trusty measuring stick here, maybe 12 inches wide. And this was the other thing. It was, um, looks like three or four inches tall. And I, I know nothing about this game uh, other than what I could read or see in the pictures when this was advertised for sale. So uh, we're gonna learn somewhat together. Um, the other thing is it's sealed. And so, you know, I'm sure the collector in me says you shouldn't open it, but you know, arguably, what's the point if you don't, don't open it? Uh, looks like there are 624 player cards that number actually sounds familiar. Uh, the featured cards here on the back of the box are Kirk Gibson and Dennis Eckersley. And this is the only thing I had to study ahead of time. Um, let's see what the obligatory marketing is. It sets a whole new standard in realistic baseball strategy board games. And here we go, the most realistic strategy baseball game ever. I thought that's what yesterday's video uh, about long ball, I thought they said the exact same thing. So we'll have to see. I am gonna open this. So history is being made. I'm gonna try to be very careful here. It's got uh, the cellophane wrapping on it. And presumably, this is factory wrapping, but I'm not 100% sure. It could have been rewrapped. But here we go. You can't get much more authentic than, than cellophane wrapping. So, let's see what we have in the box. Here we have a playing field. Really, Stargell's gonna have to get out of the way. And actually multiple playing fields. And it looks like there's all kinds of numbers here. So you got in the outfield here, you got 26 is a home run. Over in the other side, 24 is a home run. We got 23 to dead center is a triple. We got some force outs here in the infield. 
ground out to the pitcher. Um, and then I think this is a further indication of what happens on some of these uh, situations. I think these are on base situations, but I'm not sure. And presumably these are out situations. And I don't know what PC stands for in the context of this game, but you can see it's it's uh, the unusual plays, not the rare plays, but pass ball, hit by pitch, Bach while pitch. And uh, this table on the left obviously is ground balls. And then these are fly balls of varying types. And what I don't know is why there are multiple versions of this of this thing. Um, but you can see you got the home runs in the outfield again, 22 and 26. And 25 on this one is not a triple, it's just a deep fly. Yeah, so there are four of these and each each is a little different. This one has a triple in the outfield. Um, oh, and they're double-sided. Oh, I know what they are. These are the runner on base situations. Up at the top, you got runner on third, runner on first and third. So kind of in the flavor of, of APA, you have a different, different result here, depending on the runner on base situation. And as we saw, maybe with number 25, um, yeah, 25 is an example where sometimes it's a triple and sometimes it's a fly out. So uh, from a math standpoint, it looks like they may be uh, doing the same thing that like APA and long ball do with the boards, which is to subdivide the results to get a little bit more precision, which may or may not exist. In, in the game. So a pretty hefty uh, instruction book here. Copyright 1990. Uh, lots of abbreviations. Play procedure. Um, here we go. This won't be a full tutorial, but you can see the examples of cards here, if I can get it to focus. And um, I'm very used to vintage games, like really vintage games. So seeing these players from the 90s is kind of kind of interesting. Um, I actually know less less about this era than, than the one before. Um, but yeah, you can see um, the little box is the statistics. So that was a kind of a good way to squeeze statistics on the page. Um, and I suspect these are error or range and error uh, codings. Clearly, it's a kind of APA like 1 to 66. And as we saw on the boards earlier, these are obviously the result numbers, which I think you're going to read off of those big, big boards. What I also think, though, is, and I'm guessing, is some of these results have letters beside them. And my guess is that that is going to um, somehow influence the interpretation of the result. Um, and actually, if you kind of look down here, and I'm just reading it as we go here, is some of these R's and L's up here are how they do the splits. Um, and I'm not sure what, what the alternative is if it doesn't apply, but that's, that's how they're doing the splits is, is by coding some of these. So, so yeah, um, uh, and then they're talking about reading the result square, um, oh, Okay, yeah, you have um, 
pitcher stamina, fielding activity, advancement of base runners, reference to a third die. That's interesting. Uh, runner stretch option, etc. Um, there's a ballpark card apparently. Sorry, I'm learning as, as I go here. Um, all kinds of strategy. I'm not going to bore you here. At some point, if I learn the game, I'll, I'll do a tutorial video. Uh, some kind of complex picture fatigue chart and how to read it. Looks like um, there's a an innings-based approach, which is kind of what Strat does. And I see SRI and RRI, and I'm pretty sure that's the starter and relief fatigue factor, just guessing. And, um, and then, um, so you determine what inning, and it looks like um, the fatigue is based on uh, some kind of run allowed level, which it probably is his his rating. It's really hard to say. Um, there's a master strategy section of the playbook, which is hit and run and sacrifices. Yeah. Um, stretching. Um, stretching the extra base. Wild plays and injuries. Um, looks like there's some re-rolls of the dice down here, which aren't popular with a lot of people. Uh, they make reference to four dice. We'll probably see that in a minute. Um, then infield in and halfway, which maybe corners in. I don't know. Um, pick off, steal attempt. Holding runners or not holding the runners. Yeah, there's a lot here. Um, a little more complex than I expected when I saw it. Um, some additional notes here, which I don't know if you can see, but you can see, as I was saying before, that uh, the play result numbers are very much oriented toward where the balls hit. Um, yeah, the K, which I saw on one of the chart or one of the cards. Key hitting with two outs, which I guess is some kind of a clutch situation. Um, yeah, and then this turns out to be where you where you place the players or the, the play, actual player cards during play instead of a baseball field. And then apparently there's a ballpark card, which we may see here in a minute. Um, here are stickers for all the teams, and not sure what those are used for, but they're in mint condition. This is kind of interesting. This is a flyer, uh, which you can provide name, rank, and serial number, and they will promise to keep it secret. Actually, it's a marketing thing where um, they're, they're doing a survey, and then they went to get you on their mailing list. Not unusual. Team profiles, that's cool. Um, player rosters, suggested starting lineups, batting orders, lefty righty data, uh, games played at by position, team averages, um, and they're recommending use players similar to real life, which you replayers know how that works. Yeah, so it's it's a big stat sheet. And they've got a starting lineup over here and some team totals. So it looks like they have one of those for every team. Yeah, so pretty straightforward. Then there's something called the Master Strategy Playbook. So... These, uh, these look like the charts for base stealing and squeeze play and so on. 
And so like for base stealing, it looks like we have the person has a stolen base slash run uh, rating of some sort, maybe a two digit number, I'm not sure. Um, but the first digit is stolen bases. And then there's a pickoff move or what I like to call a hold in some games. So that's not uncommon. And then there's a number across the top. And then um, on the left side, they have the catcher. And it, I'm, I'm not sure if this is the throwing arm rating. No, this is the result, I think. And this might be the dice roll. It's hard to say. Um, but in any event, they have uh, interesting things like that. Um, they even have bunt for a hit, which, sorry, which um, some people like. Uh, you can do that with the bases empty. And then um, they have hit and run charts, and the results depend on whether there's a runner on first, first and third, first and second. Um, yeah, a runner's stretch chart. And wild plays, here we go. Never hurts to get wild. Um, yeah, it looks like a lot of these are just regular, but this is where some hit by pitches come in. So not not too much wildness uh, in, in the clubhouse here. And then there's a, an injury table at the bottom here. And we're not gonna figure that all out today. And they've got a customized score sheet here. Yeah, it doesn't look like they actually put a lot of information here about where you record their ratings, like a lot of score sheets do. At best, this is eight and a half by 11. Um, so it's it's really just more of a, an actual, actual score sheet, nothing special. Okay, so you know what we have here, we have rubber banded cards and I think these might be just to help you understand the rules without having the, the rule book in front of you. Uh, just reading these, um, I think it just tells you what, what to do there. It's kind of interesting. You can see the um, the thing here, which I think is a way to help you organize your teams. And the important thing here is the dice. And so there's three D6s and one large D6 white, which goes from zero to five or blank to five. Um, again, without reading the instructions, I'm not sure what that does. But there does seem to be a fair amount of in inherent precision built built into this game, more than what I thought just by reading the player cards. But I'm not sure. Maybe um, maybe some of the die are just what I would like to call decider die. And then, kind of disorganized here, unfortunately, are the player cards. And these player cards are pretty sturdy and there's all box full of them here. I don't know if they're in any particular order. Um, I guess if you were gonna sort them, you could you could figure out the team and the league here. Um, I don't know what the licensing, licensing situation was, but um, yeah, that's, that's it. And what makes this so heavy is this, these cards are in pretty good cardstock. It's probably not quite payoff pitch quality, but it's 
its glossy, heavy cardstock and just just this pile of cards right here is is, is quite heavy. Um, what I haven't seen, but it may be tucked under here, is our ballpark cards. I don't know what they do, but they're kind of kind of cool looking. And yeah, here we go, ballpark cards. Kind of great gut in there. Yeah, so it's hard hard to tell what what this is down the side or across the top. But again, without a tutorial, who knows? Um, but that's interesting. They they definitely put some thought into the ballpark cards. Yeah, so that's the unboxing. Um, you know, I guess if I have any impressions, it's this game is a little more complex than I thought it might be at the beginning. Um, you know, when I look at these games, one of the things I, I look at is to see if there would be a possibility of reverse engineering these games and, uh, you know, creating uh, your own cards. Um, it's really too early for me to tell. I think I'd have to analyze the result boards, uh, which could be a lot of work. And then I'd have to really better understand this um, this coding system here in the back, you know, uh, alongside the uh, the cards. And then I'd really have to understand how the how the dice are used. Uh, there's obviously something going on beyond just the um, thirty six chances that you get with two d sixes. And my guess is this is just a guess, is that there's probably a decider die um, that decides whether or not um, the batter card or the pitcher card is used. And that, that would help a lot uh, in terms of um, precision and, and, and designing a, a precise set of results. Um, another interesting thing here I just noticed is on the picture card, at least this one. There's a blank here on one and two. And i um, not sure what that is. I actually, now that I read this, um, these zeros may relate to that big white dice with, with a blank side on it. But if that's the case, how do you ever get a 66? I don't know. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, I could go on, and I know I've gone on too long already. If anybody knows anything about this game, feel free to comment. I uh, always appreciate uh, some feedback on these videos. Like if you found this interesting, feel free to subscribe to the, to the channel. It doesn't, doesn't matter one way or the other to me. But um, if I know people like this stuff, uh, I'm probably more motivated to do, do more. So that's... Um, Clubhouse part one. We'll see if there's a part two or beyond. Thanks. Bye.